Welcome to Wednesday, students of the gun. And uh, we hope that you're enjoying your week so far. We hope you're enjoying the uh, student of the gun episodes that we're providing for you. If not, um, you can write to uh, P.O. Vox 405 Boulder, Colorado. Send a self-addressed stamped envelope and we will refund your money uh, as soon as possible. How's that sound? Does that sound like a good. winner? Okay. Most of you kids don't know what that, all that P.O. Box, whatever, Boulder, Colorado. When I was a kid and they did PSAs on television, they would always tell you, for more information, write to blank at P.O. Box 405 Boulder, Colorado. And when I was a kid, they actually didn't even give you the zip code. They would just, it was like, it was like, public service announcement stuff for a pamphlet on how not to get herpes write to herpes at p.o box 405 boulder colorado or whatever whatever the public service announcement thing was speaking of public service announcement is anyone else and and this just came to mind is anyone else sick of being threatened by their government threatened by your government what do you mean paul all right, it's, it, we just came out of the Memorial Day weekend, right? And I don't watch TV. I don't watch regular TV, and I rarely listen to regular radio, like broadcast radio. But when I do occasionally, I'm bombarded with this, with threats from the government. Jared, do you know that it is illegal to drive drunk in the United States of America? Oh, is it really? I, I know you probably weren't aware of that. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. No, oh, it's a good thing they have those public service announcements that tell you, drive sober or get Pulled over. Law enforcement will be out in force this weekend. Isn't it? Shouldn't it be forced, enforced every weekend? Yeah, I know. Shouldn't they always be? like? So I can drive drunk like the rest of the year, just not on Memorial Day weekend or not on the 4th of July weekend. Or So the holiday weekends are the only weekends I shouldn't drive drunk. Is that what you're telling me? Well, no, Paul. Come on. No, we're just encouraging people. We're just want to encourage good people. No, F off. I like this one. Click it or ticket. Law enforcement officers will be out. Click it or ticket. Uh, turn it down or pay up. Drive sober or get pulled over. I don't need flashy boards along the side of the highway. I don't need, you know what? I'm an intelligent adult human, and I know what's right, and I know what's wrong. And I don't need a nanny state. And how much, Jared, these, these PSAs they put on television... In uh, prime time, you know, 30-second commercial spots. Are those free? Is uh, that airtime free? No. It's not? Who pays for that? Uh, the tax dollars, obviously. Oh, that comes. That comes oh, I, this is the people that I love. When, when you, if, I, if you mention something about that and you're like, hey, how are they getting money to pay for these billboards and commercial spots and, and radio spots and so forth? They're like, oh, that's not tax money. That comes from a federal grant. Duh. Uh, what did you just say to me, you moron? Oh, that's oh, that's not tax money. That comes from a federal grant. Where does the federal government get the money from? Mars? Is there a big, like, cash mine on the moon that they go up and they just mine cash out of? What? Dear, were you there when that guy actually said that? He said, oh, it's not tax money. It comes from a grant. No. I'm like... You're a special kind of retard, aren't you? Oh, I know where it was. It was um, uh, when I was talking to Mike about that new range that they built up there in uh, Wiggins, whatever. Yeah. And and the guy's like, he goes, oh, no tax money was used for this. It was, uh, they, they had a grant. Oh, yeah. Uh, where do they get their money? What? Oh, that magical money that just comes out of nowhere. I don't know why. I, but, yeah, I, I'm just sick of that. Is anybody else in the audience sick of that? Sick of being I, – I don't need to be threatened. I know – why don't they do don't murder or you'll go to prison or – I don't know. Do they need to put up signs telling people not to commit homicide or theft or, or, or don't steal a car or you won't get far? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know what? I don't need you to, to spend money buying billboards and ads to threaten me. It's insulting to me, and it should be insulting to you, too, but I digress. <laughs> All right, kids, uh, this episode, or this, uh, this hour, half hour of Student of the Gun Radio is brought to you by Century Arms, the sweetest smelling arms maker in America. 
Is that their new tagline? Should well, be. Dina does work there. That's true. Dina is. She's a sweet smelling young lady. But Century Arms and Makers are the C39, 100% made in the USA AK by Crossbreed Holsters. If you need to carry a gun, and you should be carrying a gun, if you're not, you're wrong, uh, unless you're a slave, and then I'll give you a pass. Uh, go to crossbreedholsters.com and they can hook you up. Frog Lube for sweet smelling guns, minty fresh guns that work and don't rust. How crazy is that? Or you could frog lube your sword if you feel the need. Sometimes I frog lube my sword. Don't judge me. Go to froglube.com. All right, it's Wednesday. I know we have this weird compressed week. You're like, didn't we just have the SWAT Fuel Warrior of the Week yesterday? Well, we did because we compressed the week because we did a best of on Monday. So get over yourself. Is that what you want them to do? <laughs> All right, Jared, go ahead and hit us up. It's, it's uh, Wednesday. And Wednesday is SWAT Fuel Fitness Talk Day. I need to do a, a live stream on a Wednesday so that people can tune in and, and watch you in there in the glass case of emotion. Dancing, I like to move it, move it. Yeah, apparently he likes to move it, move it. He likes to uh, move it. That's funny. Uh, so anyway, I've had a lot of questions about um, diet or what, do you, what would you say, nutrition? Nutrition. I guess, nutrition. There nutrition. we go, because I hate the word diet. But I've had a lot of questions about nutrition and what to eat after you work out. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, I've given you guys this concept before, uh, focus on protein. And a good benchmark for protein is one gram of protein for every pound of muscle in your body. Not for how much the scale says. You need to know how much muscle is in your body. How do you know that? Uh, you get a scan done. You get a scan done? Yeah. You like get at a, the airport? Well, I mean, you could there. That's not going to tell you how much muscle you have. It might tell you that you have uh, an irregular object in in a certain area. If you're a, that's kind of weird. If you go to the that one where the dude was rigging it with the chick. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, it, it, there's this thing you can buy a scanner on Amazon. It's like 300 bucks, or you can just sweet Buddha. Yeah, you can buy one of those, and then you can just keep up with it every day. 300 bucks is actually pretty cheap, but if you don't want to do that, you obviously you've got. Uh, I'm sure you have health clubs near where you are that you can go. Uh, there's also an app that you can download. It's like two bucks. You put in your body weight and you fill out all the information for yourself. I think it's called uh, Wellness Coach or something like that. But you put in all your information and it'll tell you what your general um, benchmark for pounds of muscle and everything is. Uh, it can't obviously it can't be really accurate because it doesn't actually scan your body. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so after you eat, after you work out, uh, you want to get the protein from whole food whole food sources such as lean beef, uh, eggs, turkey, chicken, uh, stuff like that. And remember, one gram of protein for every pound in your body, but that's for the entire day, not just after you work out. So usually, depending on how many times you work out a day, you'll probably want like between thirty to fifty grams of protein uh, after the workout, and depending on how hard you work out as well. Uh, fast absorbing carbs like sugar stuff that you would usually avoid uh, that actually helps if you do it immediately after you work out like within an hour or so it actually helps transport the protein and the amino acids to your muscles uh, now how about uh, non uh, non meat proteins like almonds or something like almonds that? peanut butter uh, peanut butter is your best friend well, not yours but. well not mine but well how about the uh the peanut butter that's made with polyunsaturated fats or that uh what did john sailor say to stay away from they put that fake sugar in there you know what i'm talking about mm -hmm. what's what they put the fake stuff they put in sodas instead of sugar they oh, put the, like uh, the sweet and low no 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 no, no, no it's no, in no. there though it's aspartame no the corn. no 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 what are you talking like about like that they make out of corn what's the sweetener Fructose? they make out of corn yeah, fructose, high fructose corn syrup. Yeah. 
you want to avoid high fructose. I, I, even I know that. You're actually better off having real yeah, white real sugar, sh- real sugar than high fructose yeah. corn syrup. That's like one of the worst things for you. No, John Saylor said about peanut butter, you got to be careful what kind of peanut butter he said because a lot of it has that uh, really super unnatural stu- uh, get, get the natu- sweetener in they, it. They make peanut butter now. It's it's Jif or whatever, or uh, but it says natural, all natural peanut butter on it. You can look at the ingredients and it'll tell you what's in there. It's really easy to not get the bad stuff. You want to know why your kids are fat? Because you're feeding them high fructose corn syrup. Yep. Because the cheeseburger is a dollar and a salad six. (laughs) That's why your kids are fat. Oh, come on now. Come on now. So Uh, there you go. Well, I got some numbers I want to throw out of people. All right, throw some numbers out. For you guys that like stats, uh, get a pen and paper. I'm about to uh, blow your minds. So after you work out, you want to have... A one third to a one half ratio, thirty three percent to fifty percent of protein to carbs. That's important. Uh, you need to have the carbs to transport the protein to your muscles, like I just said. And then fat, I would keep to a, like a ten percent. And then that's high. I would stay between three and five percent of the fat. Like so, your meal, your entire meal, three to five, maybe six percent of that meal can be fat. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. No makes, more. Ten right. percent is really high, so keep those numbers in mind. Powerade does Powerade have high fructose sh- corn syrup or does it have real sugar? I don't know. Mm. Oh man! I know I, Gatorade's worse than Powerade. Gatorade's terrible. Um, this one right here, I, I just got a bottle of it. Water, high fructose corn syrup. Now I'm depressed. Yeah. No, no, I'm. I'm I mean, that's not. That's not. If just drink it after you work out, it's not that big of a deal. <sighs> if you drink it all all day, every day, then it's a huge deal. But if, like, for instance, after you work out, the high fructose corn syrup will help transport the protein to your muscles. Mm. Well, that's why they came up with that. Um, what's the Powerade one that doesn't have all the sugar in it? Powerade Zero. Zero. Yeah. yeah. All right, kids. Well, that is your SWAT Fuel Fitness Talk update of the week hope you enjoyed it if you didn't remember right for your money back all right you ready to uh we haven't done a, a canadian update in a while and i thought this was important for us to talk about so go ahead and bump me in with a canadian update and then we're going to talk about it All right, folks, this comes to us from citynews.ca, and you know when you see a a story that says .ca, it's from the Great White North in Canada. Woman warned police that her life was in danger weeks before horrific killing. Well, that's terrible. Let's talk about it. So on January 19th, 2013, stick with me. You're like, why are you doing this? Um, A 27-year-old mother of two children was fatally stabbed and set on fire and left to die on a street near Weston Road and Eglinton Avenue West. Just 36 days earlier, Bridget Taki, T-A-K-Y-I, Taki, Taki, uh, told police in a taped interview that she feared for her life in, uh, after she was assaulted by her ex-boyfriend, Emmanuel Awasu Ansana, or Ansa. Uh, Awasu Ansa now stands accused of first-degree murder in her death, and he has pleaded not guilty. He claims that he had the knife and the can of gasoline because he planned to slash her tires and torch her car. Instead, he claimed that she stabbed him during the conversation or the confrontation, and he went blank. He was out. uh, Get this. When he attacked and murdered this woman, he was out on bail, but he'd been ordered to stay away from her. Oh, well, there you go. Under under cross-examination, the Crown said, they still call the... The judge, the crown in Canada? Wow. Under cross-examination, the crown said, you stabbed her in the car. That's why there's blood in there. You chased her. She was running for her life. You stabbed and hacked at her 25 times. The accused simply said he had no memory of that. Sounds like Bill Clinton. Um, For those of you that don't remember. Uh, A chilling police tape revealed that Tucky described her worst fears. Um, Yada, yada, yada. And 
here's the deal. So this chick goes in, says she's in fear for her life. The police take her statement nicely, and they write stuff down. And then her boyfriend, who is out on bail, because he's not in jail, because pe- criminals don't stay in jail here. You guys understand that? They don't stay in jail. You're like, but Paul, this is Canada. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. This is Canada. Tell me why this couldn't happen in New York, Chicago, Boston. Tell me why this couldn't happen in a city near you. Well, the fact is, is it very well could. What do we learn from this incident? Well, this incident shows us that, A, number one, and we've talked about this previously, but it's always a good time to hammer it home. Not only do the police not have the duty to protect you as an individual, they don't have the ability to protect you as an individual. Even if they wanted to, they couldn't. Number two, Civil restraining orders or temporary restraining orders are nothing more than pieces of paper. That's just another extra charge violating civil protection order. That's just another charge that the prosecutor will throw on the person after they have beaten and or killed you. Civil protection orders do not stop bad people from hurting you. Okay. Number three, when bad people get arrested the other day, uh, we had an incident here in our, our city where a guy had robbed someone at one casino and then gone to another casino to commit another robbery within an hour or so of the first one. But this time he was captured. He was tackled and captured by security. And so, you know, they put it out in the news and everyone's like, oh, good news. This casino robber was arrested. Yeah. He'll be back. No, he's already out he's already out walking around amongst the public. I can guarantee you. He was already on bond. He was already out on parole. Oh, parole. Or yeah, he was he was already out on something when he was committing these folks when when you see a story about such and such robbery, such and such assault, such and such and they were arrested. All that means is they were transported to a holding facility where they did a bunch of paper, and then they waited around for their bondsmen to get them out. They don't stay there. Them being arrested does not protect you. If you have someone who has threatened you, attempted to assault you, assaulted you previously, and then they get arrested, and you're like, oh, well, they're under arrest now. They're not going to stay in jail. I'm sorry, but that is the world that we live in. And even when they do do go to jail or prison, they don't do anywhere near the the full sentence. What do we what do we find that the average was like forty five percent of of, of uh, they, the sentences that they were given to the time that they actually served across in the United States? So a guy sentenced to ten years in jail, and four and a half years later he's out. Oh. Uh, so you're like, well, what, do, what am I going to do, Paul? Well, I'm telling you what you're going to do. It is up to each and every individual to be responsible for their own health, welfare, and protection. Your safety. Your safety is not the concern. If you think of local law enforcement, I'm not saying that they want you to be hurt, but the fact of the matter is, is not only is it not their duty to protect you, they, can't do, they couldn't do it if they wanted to. Well, that's great here in Mississippi because you can, as a citizen, or Alabama, or Louisiana, or Texas, or Florida, you can arm yourself and be ready for your to prepare your own defense. Can't do that in Canada, can you, Jared? Nope. 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 Um, and even if you're, even if the st- the state gives you, if they grant you that super special permission slip. You have to store your gun and ammunition separately. They have to be locked in separate containers. They can't be anywhere close to each other. What good does that do you? Uh, you're you're a, a stalked ex-wife, ex-girlfriend, and Johnny Psycho busts your front door down. Hang on, let me go to the gun safe and unlock it. Then I'll go to the ammunition safe and unlock that, and I'll put the two together, and then I'll stop you. Yeah, that's going to work. No, it's, it's not going to work, is it? Uh, but, but Paul, but Paul, didn't that fat piece of human garbage, Michael Moore, say that we needed to be more uh, like Canada? 
Yeah. That pat, that fat piece of human filth likes to get in front of cameras and, and tell American citizens that they need to be more like Canada. Yeah, more like Canada. Eh? No. But that's what we're led to believe. We're led to believe. If you just listen to the, the fat pieces of human excrement like Michael Moore or the, or the Nanny Bloombergs or the Schumers or the whatever, you'd think that it's all unicorns and roses and happy rainbows north of the border. Everyone has free health care, and they have, they have legitimate gun control, and it's so wonderful and happy, and there's no bad people, except the ones that, like, cut their mother's heads off, and then they get let out on for a day pass to walk around Toronto. Oh, that's right. We're not supposed to remember that. Well, you know, maybe this guy, Jared, once he gets uh, and what do we know about Canadian justice? We have murderers that are let out, psychopaths that Chopping are... Chopping their mom's head off. That they give them a day pass. Yep. So this dude that stabbed this woman to death, poured gasoline on her body and set her on fire, let's just say that he gets convicted, and he probably will. Seems like they have enough evidence. And he goes to jail. You'll forget about it. Everyone else will forget about it. But this monster, in a few years... He could be out walking around downtown Montreal, downtown Toronto, Vancouver, getting himself a day pass to see how he fits in with society. Well, that, there's really a, a hardcore, uh, they got a really hardcore justice system up there. Boy, you want to never cross them in Canada. A? No? No? A. And this is, this is the model that you are asked to emulate. You American citizens are asked to, to just be reasonable. You know, if we could just be more reasonable like those folks up there in Canada, well, things would be wonderful for us. So I just wanted to share that story with you to let you know that Canadian gun control is working for the criminals. All right, the next half hour of Student of the Gun Radio is brought to you by Velocity Triggers, designed for precision. If you haven't been to Velocity Triggers yet, you really need to go there. If you own an AR-15 or a black rifle, uh, yes, you can install it at your own desktop, your desktop, your laptop, <laughs> your tabletop, your countertop, whatever. I don't care. It's your life. Live it like you want. Check them out at VelocityTriggers.com and Brownells. Brownells, uh, if you own a gun, they got something for you. And even if you don't, they still have something for you. So go to Brownells.com today. This story you may have seen, and we hope that you have seen it. But it's about paid protesters. You're, and you're like, paid protesters? That can't be. Uh, yeah, WashingtonTimes.com. And it's, this is actually, uh, since it was first published, it's been all over the place now because of the hashtag that they created, Jared. Did you see that? The, yeah. The, what is the name of the hashtag? It's hashtag cut the check. Actually, I looked it up on Twitter just to see what was going around and... It's pretty ridiculous. Oh, it's all over the place. And then uh, not only that, not only do they have the hashtag cut the check, but other organizations have come to their aid to demand. And you're like, all right, what is this this all, this nonsense about? All right. Uh, WashingtonTimes.com, stories datelined May 19th, 2015. Hired protesters with the Black Lives Matter movement have started a cut the check hashtag campaign and held a sit-in at the offices of the successor group for ACORN. Now, you remember ACORN. Those were, that was the organization that was showing uh, pimps and prostitutes how to apply for federal money and uh, get grants so that they could buy houses and apartments to run their brothels out of. Uh, ACORN, the organization that got caught on tape uh, teaching people or advising people on how to cheat on their on their taxes and, and cheat on how to get on Social Security if they even didn't actually need it. That organization? Well, yeah, well, we took care of them. Folks, this is what happens. They get caught. They shut down. It's kind of like uh, when somebody in the government gets in trouble and they make a big deal of it and they just shift them from this job to that job and they're still on the payroll. Well, ACORN, they shut them down and they came right back as... The Missourians organizing for reform and empowerment. Oh, that sounds that sounds really progressive. Doesn't that sound progressive, Jared? 
Yes. It's a progressive title. Front page, ma- front page magazine reports that Missourians organizing for reform and empowerment, or more, M-O-R-E, has been paying protesters $5,000 a month. $5,000 a month to demonstrate in Ferguson. I'm going to go be a protester. Jared, I thought that... Uh, that the people in Ferguson, that they were, that was spontaneous outrage. That they just were just so fed up and they were so outraged, they couldn't take it anymore. And they had to take to the streets to, de- to demand action. They got to get their check. Uh, last week, hired protesters who haven't been paid held a sit in at Moore's offices and posted a demand letter online. Are you getting this? Are you getting this? Moore is a rebranded Missouri branch of Acorn, which filed for bankruptcy in 2010. Moore and other groups supporting the Black Lives Matter campaign have received millions of dollars from billionaire financier George Soros. Get this. Dude, did you see this Millennial Activist United thing? No. Dude, and I checked this. I went to their to their homepage, and this is it's real. This is actually a real thing. Will you go ahead and and, and read that where it says early in the movement? It says uh, early in the movement, nonprofit organization Moore, formerly known as St. Louis Chapter of Acorn, and local St. Louis organization. Oh man, my the thing just refreshed. Mm. There we go. Uh, nope. It's got ads. Okay. AT&T Local U-verse. Jeez. Local St. Louis organization, Organization for Black Struggle, created a joint account in which national donors from all over the world have donated $150,000 to sustain the movement. Folks, if you're really upset, if you feel that you are legitimately aggrieved and that racist cops are gunning down your friends and neighbors for no good reason, why do you need to be paid to go out and protest? Why do you need to receive money? Uh, since then, the poor black of this movement, who served as cash generators to bring money into St. Louis, have seen little to none of that money. Why, why does it say spelling incorrect? Uh, I'm not sure. It says, questions have been raised as to how the movement is to sustain when white nonprofits are hoarding monies collected off the of off black bodies. That's another spelling incorrect. When we will hold the industry of black when will we hold the industry of black suffering accountable? This is all from the the uh, um, millennial activists united homepage. Essentially they're they're down with the struggle. And the struggle apparently includes being paid for your activism. Wow. All right, let's let's go ahead and take a look at this. So here's what we know. Here are the facts that we have. We have George Soros dumping millions of dollars into these uh, black into the Black Lives Matter campaign, which is not a grassroots movement. Now we find out that they actually have opened bank accounts so that they can distribute money to paid protesters. We've got Nanny Bloomberg, who's paying money to Shannon. He's paying out, he's doling out money to Shannon, his favorite sandwich maker, and then all the other robots that we talked about yesterday. We got the Stepford moms out there reading their scripts. We've got Nanny Bloomberg, who's funneling money to the re-election campaigns of the illegal mayors, the uh, mayors against illegal guns, whatever the hell that means. So we got, and, and most of them are, you want to have some fun? Go ahead and, and uh, duck, duck, go. Go ahead and duck it and look up the, the reputations of these people that have been signed on to the Nanny Bloomberg Mayors Against Illegal Guns movement and find out how many of them are, are convicted felons and are in, who are in trouble over campaign contributions and, and violations. They're reprobates, okay? So we've got Nanny Bloomberg who's funneling money to the sandwich makers so that they can convince the the great unwashed masses that their rights really aren't their rights and they need to be reasonable. We've got the Nanny Bloomberg funneling money to the illegal mayors 
to do the same thing, right? Now we got Soros funneling money to these street thugs and agitators who descend upon these cities to burn them down, uh, fight the cops, you know, do millions upon millions of dollars of property damage, and, you know, whatever else happens to go along with it. If you still... I, I don't know how you could be listening to this and still believe that all of this nonsense that's been going on in the United States is somehow a just a spontaneous outburst of of outrage. These people are they're just outraged and they can't take it anymore. They've been so aggrieved and so abused and so blah 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 that they just they have to reach out. No. It is a one hundred now who benefits? That is the big question that you, as a thinking person, that's what you have to ask yourself. Who is benefiting from this? And you say, well, 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 nobody benefits, Paul. This is just a big, horrible, terrible thing, and and nobody benefits from it. Really? No one benefits from this? Who benefits when... You have the Department of Justice investigating local police departments under the XYZ whatever act. What did Sharpton want? He wanted them, and then uh, that Elijah Cummins, he wanted them investigated under the blah, blah, blah act. We talked about it, uh, and I, I can't forgive I me remember. for not remembering. Who benefits? Who benefits when the power is taken away out of the hands of local authorities and put into the hands of whom? Hmm. Because if you have the the DOJ under the current administration stepping in and conducting investigations of local agencies, where does the power transfer to? So it leaves the hands of local authorities and goes to whom? Oh, that's right. It goes to the central authority figures at the Department of Justice who now are pulling their strings. How do you get that done? Well, you got to have some trouble, right? You got to have problems. You have to create a crisis. You've got to burn the Reichstag down. So we are paying these people to burn down the Reichstag. And we find that the people that are behind it, then they step in. Now, you guys understand that both Soros and Bloomberg are big anti-gun people, right? Soros is a big one-world government centralized authority. You peasants need to be put in your place. I don't need, I don't think, if you're listening to me, you know who he is and what he's all about. So you go out and you, you set the Reichstag on fire. And you put it out and you step in and you're like, well, we got to do something about this. This is a huge problem. We need to take care of it. We, the locals can't take care of this. The central government has to step in and take care of this. And then you have all the sycophants from Bloomberg to Soros to these more, to the Acorn, you know, the people that took over. Basically, it's the same players. They're just playing under a different name. The people at that are at the Moore organization, I can guarantee you that they were the same people that were with Acorn. Folks, they if you do not believe, you know, I, and I know that you don't like to talk politics. I know that your gun friends, your pro-gun friends are like, I like guns, and I don't like politics, and I, and I don't want to talk politics. Um, folks, that's exactly what your enemy wants you to do. That's it. Your enemy wants you to not talk politics because whether or not you enjoy politics or whether or not you care about politics, politics cares about you. Who wins when the people are disarmed? Because if the people are disarmed, where do they have to look for their salvation? They have to look to the state, right? But they're not looking to the local state because what have we found out? We've discovered that the central government doesn't, they're not really down with that whole local control thing. The locals can't be trusted. Local police departments are all racist. They're all bigoted. They're all, they all have these practices. They're so dangerous that we have to step in and investigate them. We have to send Department of Justice monitors down 
to make sure that your local police chief is doing the right thing, that your local sheriff is doing the right thing. Hmm. Have we ever seen that before in the history of the world, Jared, where the centralized government stepped in to assume a control over the locals? Yeah, I would say that that exact same thing happened around the World War II era. You mean the Thousand Year Reich? And one of the first things they did in the Thousand Year Reich was uh, send the national troops out to uh, oversee the locals. Hmm. Folks, every totalitarian regime in the history of the world has done that. Because you can't have the locals in control. And you're like, ah, oh, conspiracy theorist, conspiracy theorist. It's happening right in front of your face. I know a lot of your friends and neighbors don't want to think about it. They don't want to talk about it. The evidence is here, and we can no longer ignore it. Like, well, what am I supposed to do about it, Paul? Well, first of all, you have to accept it. It's like being an alcoholic. You have to accept that you have a problem. Okay, I accept the fact that I have a problem. I accept the fact that there is a problem. I understand that that there are millionaires and billionaires that are dumping money into these community organizers to create trouble. They create the problem, and then, ta-da, the central government steps in as the solution to the problem. Now, yeah, we might have to crap on the Constitution or just pretend that it doesn't exist, but that's the price you pay for safety because you want safety and stability, right? That's what you want, don't you? Yeah, well, that was an old document, and it really doesn't apply today. And we've whited out some of those amendments and some of those uh, natural liberties and rights. But it's all for the great. It's for the children. Don't forget. It's just like the sandwich makers. It's all for the children. Well, how can you organize? How can you do something positive? And, you know, Jared, that, that's something that, that you and I have been talking about, and that's something that we've been striving for I don't want to just point out problems, and it's, it, is, it is incorrect to point out a problem without having a solution available. Is that not correct? That would, is correct. would you not agree with me? I do agree. Uh, that's why we came up with the Patriot Fire Team. You're like, oh, you're talking about that again. Yeah, I'm talking about that again. Because, and I'm going to keep talking about it until every single person who's listening to me goes to PatriotFireTeam.com and signs up for the free newsletter. And I looked at the numbers, and I know that not every one of you listening has done that yet. You're wrong. Fix yourself. Yes, fix yourself. Or maybe you just don't give a rat's rear end. You might not give a rat's fat rear end. You want to go talk about, you want to go argue with your buddies at the gun shop about 1911 versus Glock, 9 versus 40. And you can do that right up to the time that they load you up on the train and take you to the work camp. It's too late to complain when the doors break down and they're there to take you away, it's too late. If that's your plan, if your plan is to wait until they come for you, oh, they won't come for me. What are you talking about? Come for me. You're crazy, wild. Exp- you mean like the, uh, the political opponents in Wisconsin who woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning to their door being beaten down? because they made the mistake of supporting the wrong political candidate, that would never happen in the United States of America, would it, Jared? Oh, except for it did. Oh, except for that it did. Well, yeah, you're like, well, I know that that might have happened. I'll, I'll agree with you, Paul, that, that maybe a rogue prosecutor with a D behind his name, maybe he uh, got a sympathetic judge to hand him a fistful of John Doe warrants, which should scare the pants off of you that that actually could be a thing. That they could hand out blank warrants to law and say, well, I'll just fill in the name whenever you get a chance. What? Well, you said, oh, okay, all right, I'll admit that the prosecutor did that. Okay, I'll admit that the judge just nodded and handed this guy a bunch of John Doe warrants. I'll admit that. But th- well, we found out about it, and those people are in trouble now. They're all under federal indictment, and they're going to prison for a long time. Not last I checked. They have not been punished, and they haven't even been come haven't even been come close to being punished. Because people don't care. We folks we did a study on that. Yeah. Wow. 
That that right there, that could have happened in 1938 Germany. That could have happened in 1954 Soviet Union. That could have happened in East Germany. That could have happened in Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, Cuba. You name it, could have happened in Venezuela last week. And it happened in the United... You're like, I don't, I don't live in Wisconsin. I don't give a crap. You better give a crap because it happened in the United States of America. And if it can happen there, it can happen where you live. All it takes is... It, do you live in a, a large metropolitan area? A major metropolitan area? Dallas, Fort Worth? I know you guys are listening in Dallas. Houston? You live in Houston? You live in Atlanta, Georgia? Who runs your city? Vile scumbags with D's behind them, with capital D's behind their names. You know it's true because you got all those tax or you, no, no, not tax slaves. You have the welfare recipient slaves, those who don't pay taxes but still get to vote, who put all these vile scumbags in office. Tell me that in Austin, Texas, you couldn't get one of these guys. Tell me that your city, your police chief in Austin would not support a John Doe raid on, we already know that the the chief in Austin thinks that if you know a gun enthusiast, you need to call and turn him in. He said it. So you get a, a guy with a D behind his name who wants to come up with a bunch of blank warrants because people just need to get their heads right. Mm -hmm. They need to support the right policies. And you're like, all right, you're frustrated, you're angry, you don't know what to do. You know you should be doing something. You should be doing something. I got you. That's what it's all about. It's the I need to do something, but I don't know what that something is. Go to PatriotFireTeam.com. Click on the little tab that says join us, sign up, whatever. Put in your first name, your email address. You're going to get the, the free report how to get started. It costs you nothing. It's just something to think about. Once you read that, then you're like, oh, okay, now I get it. Or at least I'm starting to get it. The Patriot Fire Team book, it's up, it's available, it's ready. Anybody who wants it can get it. You can get it as a direct download. You can get an autographed copy, whatever, I don't care. The reason I'm mentioning this is because we've got a follow-up that's coming out very, very soon. The original is the why. It lays the foundation. This is the foundation. This is the why. Okay, now that you know the why and the history and so forth, then you can move from the why to the how. Because there's no point in me telling you, you should do this and this and this and this and, and giving you instructions. Because if you don't have the why down, if, if you don't have the reasoning or the base laid, it's pointless. That's like me telling you to go out and buy a Lamborghini and you don't even have your driver's license yet. You know, or, or telling an 18-year-old to, to, to buy a, you know, uh, a Mustang or whatever. That's, it's not going to work. You need to know why. You need to have that foundation first. So, force, I'm telling you, uh, and this, this is just more evidence, we got people being paid to agitate. We have paid thugs and paid rioters. Jared, what I want to know is how many of these agitators, how many of these paid protesters committed felonies in, in St. Louis? And when is the other shoe going to drop? And we're going to find out that a very similar organization, a very similar thing happened in Baltimore. It's not spontaneous, folks. It's organized. We have evidence of it. We have people that don't think that the United States of America, as it was organized and founded as a representative republic, is a good thing. Then it needs to be changed. And you need to suffer because of it. You know what's sad? That uh, if I if something that I wanted changed, if I deemed something worth changing, and I wanted to stand up and um, make a, a peaceful protest or make a protest about it, you wouldn't have to pay me to be there. Hmm. I would just be there because I would I, because I would, would know the right in my thing. heart that I'm doing the right thing. Yeah, but if he's going to be doing the right thing anyway, you might will get paid for it. You got to get paid. Yep. Yep. It's sick. It's insidious. And you need to know about it. And you need to make sure that everybody else knows about it, too. 
Don't let this happen. Don't shrug your shoulders and say, oh, well, there's nothing I can do about it. That's the worst thing you could do. That is that is the worst thing you could do is say, oh, well, there's nothing I can do about it. How's my fantasy football team doing? And, yeah, I'm going to say what needs to be said. And if it hurts somebody's feelings, if they don't like it, then there's a door. Hey, tomorrow we're going to be back. We're going to talk about Texas. And uh, some Texas legislators have gotten together, and they've decided that they don't like the no-gun signs. And they're going to make it a little bit more difficult for people to put those up. So good news coming out of Texas again. All right, folks, you beginner once, student for life.